if it helps in the end. Yeah, exactly. No pain, no gain or something? Meeting order. Roll call. Okay. Mayor Westergaard. Yes. Towns. Yes. Holden. Yes. Reese. Yes. Obviously no public forum. Consent agenda. Any additions? Corrections? Motion to approve. So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Holden. Yes. Towns. Yes. Reese. Yes. Okay, we got a liquor license for Lenny's Corral. Everything is in order. Yeah, I, I thought they might be here just to talk about their new business, but uh, it sounded like they probably weren't going to be. But everything is in order just for a, it's a new liquor license for, um, it's, it's Tammy Smith and, and Jim Westman. Their business name, T&J's T Association LLC, but it, it'll still be doing business as Lenny's Corral. We have a motion to approve the liquor license. So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Reese. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Walton. Yes. Okay, resolution 1855. That's our final billing on the ribbons. Well, it's what we're doing is uh, is finalizing the assessment, and so I guess just understand that that the uh, the method of payment then for for uh, being reimbursed for this then becomes a special accept, a special assessment. Okay, so. Um, it's, it stipulates in the resolution about repayment, and in this case, if they were to continue to repay it, they could pay over 10 years in 10 installments, like any regular special special assessment. Um, the, so it's just evenly broken down within that yes, time period? With interest, it's 5% interest. They're supposed to have an option to green, aren't they? Yeah, they kind of put that on hold now until they uh, see what we're going to do and then what, what they need to do with the... Uh, special assessment because that's going to make the property difficult to sell. Yes. So do, do they pick, I mean they could pick the 10 years or is It'll, that? It will default to that then. They could they can prepay as much as they want. I see. Okay, but otherwise it'll, it'll default to that. Uh, I do want to point this out to you about the the amount that's proposed to be assessed and that's in the memo. You can, you can see that number there, 110,000. But that a couple, a couple of new things there that we've confirmed that we, there is no bill for the disposal of the tires that were on rims. So the metal recycler <coughs> took the tires in exchange for the value of the rims. So that was, I had had that like $12,000, so that was positive. And I also did not propose to uh, include what was about $3,000 for rock. That rock ended up out at the lagoon site. So total on that. Yeah, at one point we had talked 123,000, but the total would be 110,075 dollars. That's something weird, and we'll pay back. I'll over at the end of that. Ruins or somebody. It it goes on to the property. Yeah. Okay. It, um, if if nobody would pay it, if I'm right about this, if nobody would pay it, Davis, it ends up being basically in the same vein as property taxes that it becomes past due and right and there can be some action taken on the property and then there's a process i have to get the supervisors to pass this resolution which i've been meaning to do but uh, there's a process whereby the city can uh, request that they not sell it at property tax sale and to uh, feed it over to the city at a certain point i wondered about that so it doesn't have to go through a tax sale right okay. it's to it, yeah, and that, that process is to keep it from going to a tax sale, getting it out of state or right. uh, investor that's not going to do anything with it. Uh, they're giving the city the ability to leverage a use out of it and put it back on the tax rolls. But if you don't get that done and it did go to a tax sale, the assessment still holds, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion to approve 1855. So second? I'll second. Roll call. Holman. Yes. Tom. Yes. Reese. Yes. Okay, 1856, we're just going to set a date for the sale. Yeah, what this does is we had previously established price on each one of those parcels at $750. So this uh, allows us then to notify all of the potential property owners of that, uh, that they would be eligible to purchase their adjacent parcel. 
if they would choose not to purchase their adjacent parcel, any of the other interested property owners down there in that area could purchase. That's how we, we worded it, that only the property owners down there would be eligible. Um, so, uh, if, the, if this uh, resolution passes, what it would do is send out notice to all of the property owners here very shortly, and uh, also got to publish this in the paper. Then, at the next City Council meeting on the 17th, we have a, a public hearing on the disposal of, of the property, and we can proceed with the sale. We have a motion on 1856 to approve that. I'll make it. Second. Roll call. Thomas. Yes. Holden. Yep. Reese. Yes. Okay, resolution 1857 is on the Home Rule. We've been talking about that for a while. Yeah, this is just the 50th anniversary of Home Rule, and, and we, had, we had not uh, uh, passed this, this resolution acknowledging that and, and continuing. Uh, supporting its continued authority and the League of Cities would certainly like us to do this and yeah, I think it's a, a good statement about the importance of home rule. So, second? I'll second. Roll call. Bolton? Yes. Tom? Yes. Reese? Yes. Okay, we have a pay estimate for legacy. They're finally done. They're done. They had a schedule, wasn't it? A few days. They, uh, so it, it's done. Let me point this out to you. Let's take a look at <clears throat> at at uh, page 14 is is the cover page of of their pay estimates and clear in the upper right hand corner. So this just know that the original contract price 633 thousand and the expected final contract cost is is very similar 638 thousand. There was a handful of additional units added along the way to the project, additional poles or additional guys or anything something like that. So uh, anyway, we come in. And real close to uh, what the original contract was. There is no formal change orders. Um, you see the uh, total amount that would be paid is this 95%. That that's full payment, other than the 5% retainage, and the amount requested from this pay estimate is actually in the middle of the page, 148,025. So the addition in the cost was approved by Bill, or how was yeah, that? Through the engineer and, and then Bill consulting with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, flip flip the next page. And you if you look over in the work completed to date column, which is the, the second one from the right, anytime it reads more than hundred percent there was an extra unit or two installed in that area. Okay. We have a motion to pay legacy. Yes. Second? I'll second it. Roll call. Reese? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Walton? Yes. Okay, administrative report. Uh, a few things. Just uh, we are we do have something in the works about working on that digester down at the sewer plant. And this is supposed to happen tomorrow, where we have this company called HydroClean coming, and they will attempt to take apart some of, of the piping and try to be able to uh, clear this blockage. Uh, we give this a shot and, and you know, see, see how this goes. This one's $3,000 instead of $42,000 to pump out the digester. So we're gonna, going to give this one... So a, this company thinks it's possible? Yeah, they, they, they do have a, a different piece of, of equipment. It's a smaller jetter that goes around bent. And our jetter couldn't go around bends, and there's 90 degree bends in this, and that's uh, part of the problem. So. But they're going to take the fitting off in the basement, so if it does leak out, we could have some issues. Could have a basement full of, of, <laughs> full of sludge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's the basement? It's, it's the basement of the digester yeah, building out there. Oh, it's at the sewer plant. It's, it's had it there before. Not a pleasant place to be. Um, just a couple updates on, on downtown uh, building projects there as far as the, the Moore building and the Catalyst uh, project. We're working on that application that's due next week. And uh, for both the Moore building and the Carroll building, the asbestos inspections have, have been done. We're just waiting on those results. We haven't received anything back on those results yet. Um, on uh, Keith Carroll, uh, 
we have that development agreement with him, and he has that agreement and has been to see his attorney last week. And that's kind of the update on that. I heard, haven't heard anything back yet from that meeting. Uh, just a, a couple other things about the fire department uh, trustees meeting is next Monday, and the council packet for that meeting was, uh, was at your desk tonight. Um, SAC County League meeting is next Wednesday the 12th. So next Wednesday the 12th, but I need to RSVP this week yet, so I need to know who would plan on going to that meeting on the 12th. Over there. I think I can go. Two. For me. One for me. I guess this morning for me. Okay. RSVP and then also Northwest Iowa League is actually early this month. It's it is this Thursday. It's up at Marcus. And this, that that our, that over Wall Lake is at seven. Dinners at six. Uh, excuse me. Social time at six thirty. Dinner at seven. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, I wanted to go through a couple things on health insurance. And this we is have that. something for the auction. Yes. Toy box. Sorry. We can take a look at this sheet that I that I gave you today. The one site called Health Insurance Cost Calculator. You want to pass that down? Oh. Um, these are these are just the numbers on, on what happens with a 19% rate increase from Walmart. So uh, I really just wanted to be able to show that to you for the 10 policies that we have for our city employees. Uh, it increases the premium, of course, premium cost to the city and, and to the employee. But the, the big box there on the bottom, the additional cost, annual cost to the city is that $21,000. So that, that is the, the additional cost for that 19% uh, uh, increase. We've been really taking a good, strong look at, at another option, and we just heard today that they're, they won't underwrite our group. So our, uh, we're pretty limited in, in our choices now, you know, we, to where we have this Walmart policy, that's our grandfather policy, and then we'll also have some other options about ACA compliant plans. And we'll continue to look at other health insurance companies, but uh, they're really limited. Our employees, they don't pay any of that, correct? This, they, if you have a single policy, it's 100% paid by the city, okay? No. The city pays 75% of the additional cost of dependent coverage. So the employee has 20, 25% of that. I wanted to point out on the back page there, I put it in brackets. This is, this is our union contract about that. In the event that uh, health insurance premiums would increase more than 15%. But that's during the years of, of 1819 and 1920. During those years combined, then we would agree, all parties agree to reopen contract renegotiations of health insurance and wages. Okay. Well, how's that going to work then? You're saying that we have to have two years of an increase? That over the course of those two years, it need to be more than 15%. But it's going to be more than 15% unless you find something else. Yeah, but really it's a, qu a question for Dave about whether we'd have any chance of reopening it after that one year or did we write it so that we're... I think, I think it, uh, when I just glanced at this just now, it looked to me like we could do it as soon as we get hit with 19%. Okay. I would think so too. Because I think that the employee's share of it is really really generous it's really generous I don't know of any other well, I guess I don't know but well that's, that's true enough but then you know like the other night when um, Cameron was here you know he said he's you know 25 bucks an hour and he could go any place and get 40 yeah. so you know that's something you want to look at too it's wages. And if we're low on our wages, that's the way to stay in the ballpark. <clears throat> With benefits, you mean, or what? 
Well, yeah, yeah, sure. But, but, yeah. Well, I think I'd want I'd want a verified. <coughs> I would want a verified comparison. Well, I'm pretty sure that he can go I get forty. So we can take a look at it. I mean, that's one employee. Well, I agree with you know, but I'm just saying that that's something you want to look at too. I'm going to guess that all the other public entities, county and school, will be looking at a substantial increase also. And both county and school for singles also 100% paid. In our uh, you know, that we have the 75% of dependent coverage is, is a great benefit for the employee. But like I say, it's, it's generous. I, I think um, it's very generous. When you compare us against other public entities, though, it's not unusual. I would say that. Right. But, you know, just like Vicki, I'm looking for that to possibly change with the others, too. You know, because, you know, you can't swallow that no. pill forever. No. Yeah. But I, wanted, I really wanted to bring this up to you because our renewal date on this is January 1. You know, we're going to have this thing coming at us here at the next city council meeting, likely needing to have a decision about what it is. And we'll present what we have for options, just know that it's really limited. That's it. That's it. We need a motion to go into closed session for a second. Yeah. I don't know. Roll we'll call. Thanks for coming, Dale. Hey, yeah. Well, there's a three I know. Comes. Could have wired you. Okay. Well, yeah. Got that judge. Yeah. Team email or. Uh, yeah, pass. there you go. Yeah, I could have waited and watched the video. Good <laughs> enough. <laughs>